out there with some really great science questions. Yeah. So let's take just three of their questions and answer them this week, all right? First up, let's hear from this guy. Hi, Mr. Howes and Roland. My science question is, are UFOs real? Wow, what a great question. Are UFOs real? Huh, that's a pretty big question. People have been studying them for a long time. There's even parts of the Pentagon dedicated to studying UFOs. The short answer is yes, UFOs are real. But let's think about what UFO stands for. An unidentified flying object. Woo! Woo! Do you know what that was? No, it's unidentified. It's a flying object. UFO. Right, it's a UFO. But like most things, if you take a closer look, that was just a Challenge 24 card flying by, you can identify it. A lot of things in our skies are mistaken. They're mistaken for aliens. So the UFOs that we see, we usually can identify. Some things that we commonly think are UFOs are lightning. Uh, when the military's testing missiles and things like that. Um, even strange cloud formations with the light going through them can look like a UFO. Uh, Venus, Venus, the second planet from the sun, it's the brightest one in our sky. Sometimes people see that and they think, wow, that must be a UFO. Uh, airplane testing, there's new types of airplanes and drones out there. These guys flying around with lights, someone sees that and doesn't know it's a drone, they might think, oh hey, that's a UFO. And balloons. Weather balloons, hot air balloons move differently. So all these things, people think, wow, I just saw a UFO. And they did, because they didn't know what it was. But after a little bit of investigation, 99% of them are identified. Now there is a few of them we never figure out what they are. Does that mean they're aliens? Probably not, we don't know. When you're talking about aliens, things are broken down into what we call encounters. Now, five different encounters. There's a whole bunch of close encounters of the first kind. The first kind just means that you see an alien spaceship from about 150 kilometers away. You see it in the distance. You see it far away. I think that's an alien. These are most of our UFOs and these are most of the encounters we have that people think of and people report. But like we said, there's all sorts of stuff in our atmosphere pieces of satellites, different things, that those usually get explained. The second is evidence left behind by an alien spaceship landing. That's called a close encounter of the second kind, like burn marks or strange patterns. And a lot of these have turned out to be hoaxes. Some guy with a really good lawnmower just putting trails in his field. A lot of those were later discovered. Some said, oh, I did that. I was just trying to fool with people. So most of those can be explained, and there's not very many of those either. The third type is when you see an alien. A close encounter of the third type is when you actually get to see an alien. And there's very, very few reliable people who said they have seen an alien. Like, not their spaceship, the actual creature walking around, take me to your leader. Those are even more rare, and very rare from reliable sources that we can test and study, and obviously they don't pose for pictures. So, and a lot of the pictures we do have, again, were hoaxes. P hoax just is like somebody playing a joke, dressing up in a costume or things like that. So that's, that's the third type. Close encounter of the fourth kind is when you get to visit the aliens in their spaceship. They pick you up and take you in their spaceship. And some people claim this has happened to them, but again, you gotta look at the source. Sometimes people are just telling stories and things like that. Or they fall and bump their head and think, well, I must have been visited by aliens. No, you just fell and bumped your head. So that doesn't happen very often either. And close encounter of the fifth, time, fifth kind is when you actually communicate with an alien. Like, hey, alien, how's your planet? Hey, my planet's pretty good. 
you know. So, yeah, again, not, that does not happen very often from a reliable source. So, yes, there are UFOs out there, but most of them are just ordinary things. That doesn't mean there isn't life on other planets. The more we discover about how huge space is, we found a lot of Goldilocks planets. Goldilocks planets, like three bears? No, a Goldilocks planet is just a planet that is, say this is their sun. They are in a range that is the right distance from the sun, so they're not too close and they're not too far that they could maintain life as we know it. And with our new telescopes and things like that out in outer space, we are discovering more Goldilocks planets that could have life. And that doesn't mean there's life, like our life forms are carbon based. Maybe there's life forms that are other based. So with all the different planets out there and how big the universe is, there, I would, would be a safe bet to say there is something out there. But that doesn't mean it's visiting our planet, picking up our cows. So we hope that answers your question. Yes, there are UFOs. They're unidentified flying objects, but most of them aren't aliens coming to visit us. Ah! Hello, Mr. House and Lowen. My mom says to keep my to keep my things away from my iPad and my computer. Why is that? Another great question. So that that student's Millie Gang member, his mom told him, keep magnets away from your electronics, away from your computers, and away from your iPads because they could damage them. Now, you always want to listen to your mom, that's for sure. But the truth is, your mom is probably around my age and she grew up in the 80s when computers were totally different. Uh, inside your modern computer, we have ADH3 here. Remember building him last year, Malia Gang? He is made out of a bunch of parts of computers. And in modern day computers and video games, there's tons of magnets in here. This right here is a speaker from an old computer and it's a magnet. Woo! It's a magnet. So, a lot of modern day computers already have magnets in them. And a magnet isn't really going to infect, affect modern day iPads or computers. They're not going to. But, what your mom is talking about is a long time ago, computers used floppy disks. Ah, I'm gonna break this guy open. This is actually second generation floppy disk, yes. And this is where the information was stored on this little disk. And this disk was like a magnetized strip. So if I put all my great fam, all Roland's baby pictures on this disk, and oh yes, I don't want anything to happen, and then I ran across a magnet, oh no! It all got erased. So older computers could not have magnets around them. Modern computers have magnets in them and they don't really affect our hard drives because they're not huh. on discs like this. So, still, listen to your mom, but a magnet won't hurt a modern computer unless you throw it at it. Disc. Huh? I wonder what's on that disc. Nothing anymore. <laughs> <laughs> unless you throw it at the computer, your magnet's not going to hurt your modern computer. Hi, Mr. Housen. Fun. Why, why does the sun, why does the sky look red sometimes? Wow, that's another great question. A third great question. Why does the sky look red sometimes? Well, normally, what color does the sky look? Blue? Right. And, you know, we know that the light, if you go back to our other video on colors, we know that light is made up of a whole bunch of spectrum of colors. Red, orange, yellow, blue, green, indigo, violet. And all those colors are coming down from the sun as white light. But each of those colors is traveling at a different wavelength. Woo! Woo! The red ones are longest. They're the biggest wavelengths. So when we look up into the sky on a day like today, you know, we see that all these scattered rays or all the particles in the air, the molecules in the air, our atmosphere, are scattering the red and the violet and the blue all over the place. But our eyes pick up blue better than any other color. So we see the sky as blue. What but 
the human eye just is developed to see blue more receptive to blue than any of the other colors. So when we see it, we look up, we see blue. Now, during sunset and sunrise, when the sun is closer to the horizon, I mean, again, if this was the Earth, it was the sun, now it's the Earth, and the sun was over here, far away, its rays are traveling through more of our atmosphere. It's traveling through more of our atmosphere. And all those rays, red, orange, yellow, blue, indigo, green, indigo, violet, are getting hit by the molecules in our atmosphere. But the longest of the rays are what? The really long rays are those red ones. So these red rays make it through. They make it through the atmosphere when all the other ones are being scattered. It's called like a Rayleigh scatter, a Rayleigh scatter. And they're being scattered by our atmospheres. So we see a red sky. Now, some people think red sky in the morn, sailors be warned, something like that. The, the sailors used to think it meant something like a blood sky or things like that. But really, it's just the fact that the sun's rays are hitting us at an angle that the rays have to go through more of our atmosphere and it's scattering all those colors and only the longest waves, the red waves, are making it through. So everything looks red. Okay, gang, that was some great questions. Keep them coming and we, we really enjoyed answering them. So maybe next week we'll do a few more. Yep, bye-bye. Sorry.